Hello, welcome to HQ Live. I'm Vicki Hoth, and this is Christina Whitney and Johnny Barfus, and we are in the Handy Quiller uh, studio, ready today to talk about memory quilts. Now we've done t-shirt quilts, and you can go back on a previous uh, one of our HQ Lives about t-shirt quilts that are kind of memory quilts, aren't they? Mm -hmm. yeah, they're yeah. a type of memory quilt. Right, but there's memory quilts, and it's been so fun watching bringing in quilts that we feel are memory quilts. So Christina, what, what is a memory quilt? In my opinion, a memory quilt is anything that gives emotion, it brings that memory and good feelings. Okay, mm -hmm. Johnny, what's your... I love to include pictures or fabric that reminds the person of things that they like or memories of, with that person. All right. So I love so pictures. Memory quilts to me are things that I have accumulated, maybe like scout badges or my husband's work clothes with a patch on it if mm -hmm. that was the type yep. thing. So these are all different things that we can use for memory quilts. So let's start and what do you have for some of the memory quilts? And I know we're going to talk about how to collect, how to put together, and how to quilt a memory quilt yep. to the to make it really cherished. Well first of all there's different types. You can have a memory quilt where the fabric is the memory. So I brought this one in. Let's open that up a little bit so we can see it. So I lived in Guatemala for a few years and we had this fabric there. This is their traditional fabric. And so it was all put into a quilt top. And so now every time I see this, it brings back those memories of the time I lived in Guatemala. Okay, so these are all different types <laughs> of weaves of different fabrics. But the one thing I see is there is no quilting in this. Nope. But it's still a quilt. Mm -hmm. There is no batting no in batting. it. It was so heavy that we just let it so be. So it's the heavier fabrics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's so some good memories from your mm -hmm. time in Guatemala. Yes. All right. Yeah. So this was from a block exchange that we did here at Handy Quilter with the Inspiration Squad in 2017. Okay. And each person was asked to bring a square that represented them. So I put everybody together and I just pinned their labels on so that I can remember which block goes to which person. And with there being 13 people, it didn't really work out well. So we have one for the education department and one for the marketing department that we worked with. Oh, that was really fun. Yeah. So choose some fabric and mm -hmm. fussy cut. Yep. So uh, just gonna throw something at you. How would you make this more permanent? Because I know you haven't bound it yet, yep. but of course you'd bind it. And this is all raw edge, which mm -hmm. I meant that primitive type yeah. feel. But how, I mean, what about the labels? So I think what I'm gonna end up doing with this is just having it hang in my studio at home. So I'm gonna bind it, and I'm probably just gonna leave the labels how they are, because, but then put one on the back as well. Because some of these are their little mm -hmm postage label yes. or a business card mm -hmm. so it's still part of them the memory of them yes that's great okay you're not gonna wash that one no this one <laughs> will be hanging up and hopefully won't get too dirty and a good memory for all the good times you had on the because Christina was on the inspiration <laughs> squad yep okay what else have we got here okay this is another educators quilt she made this out of all of her dad's work shirts. <gasps> Look, there's a label. Yep, so there's labels. There's some spots where you can find pockets. Oh, Another right Another label, yep, and a pocket in there. So these are all of the shirts. And so every time that she cuddles up with this one, it brings back those memories. Oh my gosh, that just gives me goosebumps. Yep. And it was intentionally made to be used and loved and cuddled with. So this is the type of memory quilt that can be washed over and over again. Oh my gosh, that is so awesome. That's great. What a good memory. There's some more. Okay, now what's the next type? We're going to talk quilt. about signature quilts. Signature quilts. Would you like to see some? I would love to see some. Let me grab some. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so we've got a variety of different signature quilts here. I'm going to set that out of the way. So this is a vintage quilt that has not yet been quilted. 
and you'll notice it's got the signature embroidered on and it's throughout the whole quilt. So all these different signatures mm -hmm. that are not written on but embroidered, which yes. is really, really I nice. I love this one. And this is a vintage quilt, yeah, so this so is great. really nice. Are you? How, it's going to be fun to quilt this, huh? Yes. And the nice thing about the signature quilt is, is because of you could actually quilt over the top of that mm -hmm. with this cream thread and not take away from that label or that name, mm -hmm. which in some quilts you just don't want to quilt yeah. over the top. Yep. So that's that's nice. Okay. Yep. All right. What about, what's next? We've got this one here. It is a long oh, yes. list and it's got signatures and it looks like a person signed their name on each of the blocks using a permanent marker. Okay. So there are different types of markers you can use. Um, if you use a Sharpie, you run the risk of it bleeding and right. kind of leaking. So there's different types of pens that are out there on the market, but you just need to make sure it, it is a permanent. Permanent. Yes. Okay. And then do you press, heat press that afterwards to maybe heat set it a little better? So there's a variety of things that you can do. You can heat set it. Um, I like to also sometimes soak mine in vinegar. Okay. To help set that, or there are different chemicals out there that you can purchase to okay, like bubble jet and retain. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. Okay. And that's kind of fun, just a strip of quilt mm -hmm. signatures like yeah. that. All right. And this okay. one looks like it's been written on probably with that one, mm -hmm. the type of uh, permanent pen. Yep. So you can see just a few of the blocks have the signatures in them, not all of them. And um, there are different techniques if you are doing a signature quilt with a large group. Mm -hmm. So say you want to do something like this, you can take your block that you have, and I like to put tape along the edges. So this is just a painter's masking mm -hmm. tape? Yeah, and then that keeps the people from signing into your seam allowance. Oh, see my <laughs> thought was it would keep them from fraying the edges. That too. But I like the idea of the seam allowance yes. because some of these were kind of close. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. okay. and you could even Not make that one. make the tape line a little bit wider if you want to have the signature not in the seam allowance, but right not right up against okay. it. Okay, okay. So those are some. Oh, that's a great ways idea. Working with a group. So, well, I'm not gonna. I'll let you. Oh, you I know work. you have a. You have a uh, plan here, so. Oh, oh, do I get to talk about this one? This Since is yours. This is mine. Yes. This is a quilt that my children and grandchildren all made for their grandpa, which is my husband. And so this, and they, they put fleece on the back of it and footballs, and then I just did an overall quilting on it, but they use crayons. Now there are different types of crayons. Some you wanna use and some you don't wanna use. Yes. So these are washable. Now, if this quilt gets washed, those are going <laughs> to disappear. Yeah, no so more memory. That. No more memory. <laughs> that would be really sad. It would. Yeah, and so you want to choose your regular crayons that are not washable, and then after you um, have your, kill, your children or grandchildren uh, color on it, then you need to heat set that, put a piece of paper over the top of it, and a paper underneath it, and then heat set it. The, pro the thing you have to be really careful with when you heat set it is that you don't scorch this, the paper, mm. the fabric. So you have to heat set it enough, but not so much that you would scorch your fabric. Yeah. But, and, and then they're washable. And they're, you know, we've got all of these fun, fun hands and different fun memories of the grandkids doing this. Yeah. And so it's a great memory quilt. And that looks like another one that's nice and Oh, Cozy cuddly. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. We like to cuddle with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we'll go ahead. Uh, there's another marking pins that you've got there that I'd like you to talk about. Maybe two because this is... Yes. So I, I failed to mention that earlier, but I'm going to actually grab that one. Sure. So this is a friction pen, which um, you can iron off. Right. So say you're having somebody do a quilt block and they're really not comfortable just free flowing there okay <laughs> they they want lines they they're just not secure they can take a friction pen and actually write their signature or whatever they're writing on there okay if they're not happy with it just iron it off after they're satisfied then go back with your permanent marker and just go over it okay and what are these 
So those are a different type of fabric marker and these are colored and you can see it's got two different tips. Okay. Can I write on that? I would love for you to write on it. Is that the color you want? That's my color. Okay, perfect. It's my color. So, so, um, Wait, do you need to use the friction I, marker first? No, I'm going to be fine, but I'm going to, I would hate to write on this quilt right here. So I'm just going to put my name. Oh. So to set it, um, you can read the directions first of all on whatever type of pen that you're using. When I do these, I usually just soak them in vinegar for about five minutes. Heat setting not required. Yeah, so some markers you don't need to do anything to set them, they're just permanent as is. Others you can heat set, others you can soak in a solution. Okay, all right, so it's ready to go. Yep. All right, so let's pull this all away, and what's our next one we're gonna work with? I think we're gonna have Johnny talk about some photo quilts. All right, let's do some photo quilts. Because you have got some awesome photo quilts. All right, let's, let's pull them on. Okay, Johnny, we have, you have a whole top pile of quilts here. What are you gonna tell us? Well, photos and other kind of memories that I put into this uh, quilt. So about, this is about 13 years old, made it for my friend's 40th birthday. So you can see we did some pictures in there. These are I all did iron on. Okay. And we'll talk about it in a second, different ways you can do okay. that. But I just like made the block first and then took them to right to the printer with the block and had them ironed on for me. And that really worked well until they quit doing it, but that's fine. So you'll find what works <laughs> for you. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, a jean pocket. So that was one friend sent a hit pocket from his jeans. We have this one that is some... Uh, piecing. Some. Yeah, piecing, like hand piecing. Uh -huh. And this is to, for a popular board game that we like to play with that friend. So okay. they made that as a memory of that board game. What's so that, that board was, game? It's called Settlers. Okay. So... Yeah, so this is like this. This looks like the pieces of the board game. Right. So that's what's fun about that. And then tell me about this block that has yeah. nothing in it. So my sister, her favorite color is white. So she sent in a blank white square for her square. So and she has more blank white. <laughs> <laughs> she had two, and then she likes snowflakes as well. So okay. this is white on white snowflake. But you can see we have also some fleece oh, from the yeah. university she attended. There's dog she likes fabrics dogs. she likes dogs. Uh, so yeah. how many people participated in this quilt? Oh, I don't know, probably 20, 30 So or each so. one of them had one block or, or two, two? some two. Okay. And we just gathered pictures of all the friends and family. Because so. I see there was a graduation picture. Yeah. Was that all of your friends that you uh -huh. were there together? Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And photos of all these. Now, I see this one. Uh, is small on the fabric here, but uh, this one, this is a little bigger, and I noticed that you haven't quilted on these blocks at all. Yeah, Why? this one I kind of am like, it's probably never been used, it's never been washed, I don't think. She just, you know, uses it to show off in her room a little bit, so I didn't, we didn't quilt it as if it was going to be washed often. So okay. I think that's something, if it's if it's going to be like a wall hanging. Which or would you, sag if it hung yeah, after a while. Like, or if on a, this one like, hang, hangs on a, a quilt rack. Okay. So if you're going to use it in that way, I wouldn't worry too much about the batting, you know, the quilting. Quilting. Because you know. if you quilt it through these faces, it would distort no. it. It wouldn't be good. Yeah, don't quilt through your friends' faces. That's not, that's not happy. Depends on how you like them, huh? <laughs> no, we, we like all these friends' stuff. Okay, that's good. All right, so you've got quilting around the rest of it, but not in any of the blocks. Right. All right. Not on the faces. Okay, so what's next? Uh, this one here is one that I had uh, started for my mom and dad and never got finished so it's just an unfinished quilt top still ready to <laughs> ready do. to do yep so same thing we have photo memories this one we i printed on an iron-on fabric i mean uh, sorry printed on an iron-on sheet and then cut it out and pressed it onto here. Okay, so it's kind of a plastic feel. Yeah, so it's not as nice as if you can have oh, it. Oh, I can see where some of that plastic is coming off, but yeah. it did leave the yeah. picture on yeah, it. Yeah, so it has a film. This one is weird. It has a film 
that you have to peel off on each one. So you can see here, I don't know if that shows oh, up. Oh, does that have to come that, off? Yeah, so that actually peels oh, off. okay. And it looks good underneath. Right. But again, this is probably about 12-year-old technology, and I think right now we have a lot better options okay. for photos, so we can show a few of those different things. All right, and so this is a type of uh, printing paper uh -huh. that you use. Is this one with the the uh, plastic on it, or would this actually go into the fabric? I think this prints right on the fabric, I believe. So yeah. it doesn't leave a plastic film. Yeah. So, and that's what this quilt has here, yeah. is it actually prints into the fabric, so you right. still see the grain. Yeah, and this one fabric. here is one that hangs here at Handy Quilter. It was sent in by um, one, one of, of our, our retailers. retailers. Yep, and so it has pictures of all different, um, you, customers, clients of ours using their handy quilter machines. That's what's really cute about this one. But you can see there's, like you said, it's printed right on the fabric. And again, there's not any quilting on the picture because it's not going to be used or washed. It just hangs here in the okay. studio. All right. Um, some other choices we have for printing on fabric is like Spoonflower or other companies where you can upload your picture and they print it right on the fabric and send it to you. Okay. And that comes back really nice. So what about this great big quilt that we have here from our qu and I quilt people? Yeah, let's show that. Hold okay. On. Okay. This is a quilt from and I quilt the qu and I quilt group and they sent this to Handy Quilter. They pull all there's 14 of them. They pull this all together send it and there's so many techniques in it but what a memory quilt this is yep. this so, is so so crazy fun. it's amazing but if you were to look at this this picture right here you can really see the f the grain of the fabric yep. and as i touch that it's really soft it's not like the plastic right. so that's a really good product that they use yes and i wish i knew but i'll have we'll have to find that out um, there's all sorts of things going on in this quilt. Christina, what are some of your favorites? Oh, you want me to just Well, so each block depicted something of the person. So it's got their name, which is wonderful. You want to be able to remember who is this person. So it's nice to have the name, something about that person, and then you've got their block that represents them. And it's got one block for each person that's just like that. So some of the techniques, this is a netting over the top of all this scraps of fabric. And then it's couched mm -hmm. using uh, the quilting machine to couch it. Of course, these were done on an embroidery machine, but they were placed in here and they were quilted. The only thing that is not quilted over the top of are their faces. Yeah. But everything else has wonderful, yeah, wonderful there's quilting. quilting everywhere. Yes. And, and these photos in the bo in the border here, we we're talking about this. They haven't quilted again. They haven't quilted on any faces or in the picture, but they've done couching right up until that point. But this is going to hang really pretty. Yes. So just some of the memories as we pull through here. This is Nicholas from Canada. He says, "I'm a professional candy maker, a costume designer." and I quilt. And so there's all different types of memories that were made. Um, I'm trying to think one of them that I really thought was, oh, and this is, I mean, we could go through them all. Yeah. And we probably should to give them all equal credit. But this one right here, this is what happened when all of our And I Quilt people came in the door, is that all of Handy Quilter were standing there around the railings and everything and threw confetti and streamers and this is what they remembered and it's just so fun. Yep. So memories, how fun are these memories to do? So, uh, you know, the couching, all different types of applique, all sorts of things, embroidery, machine embroidery. So the sky's the limit on what we can do. Oh, yeah. But what else can we do? Well, we can, um take some of the stuff that we have and actually, like this is a good example to start with piecing to make the memory. So like this one here that you were just showing, that pieced block is her memory. Right. So we can share some other examples of okay. how we can Let's do Okay, let's pull memories. some in. All okay. right. All right, Christina, what have you got here? I see some photos mm -hmm. and then I see the quilt. So this is a, a stained glass door that um, my husband helped build and I really liked it, so I wanted to do something of 
the time. Was this we while you were in Guatemala? This is while we were in Guatemala. So it's this beautiful. is the actual stained glass from the door. Wow. So that hangs up in my studio, and every time I look at it, it reminds me of our time there. Wow, you got a lot of memories. I do. <laughs> Lots of good memories. For being so young. Oh. <laughs> All right, what's next? Because I'm kind of intrigued by this. Okay, so I've got this friend. Her name is Sheila Stetler. But she's um, from a town just north of where I live, and she does the most amazing applique and detail work. But she's wanting to do what she calls her legacy quilt. And it's got blocks from all those memories of growing up in this town. Okay. And so here's a couple pictures. I'll have you guys hold those up. And the pictures represent different areas. And then she applicated it into a block. Okay. Hold that up, Johnny. Oh, my. Isn't the that The detail. Amazing? Oh, my gosh. Get the detail of this. This is amazing. Talk about the detail. Okay, so each one of these steps is individual. You can feel the ridges of the steps. She's got stained glass in the windows, all of the lettering from the building. I mean, just the, the work on these doors. Look at that. And the lamps. And she made it so that all of the landscape was from when she was growing up, not how it looks today. today. Yes. Okay. All right. So can we that was, see another one? Yes. So I'll have you hold that picture up. And this is one of her friend's houses. And again, just amazing detail. She's got all of the flowers out in the front, um, the, like the molding along the roof line, the stained glass again. And, and the back, just so you know, is as good as the front. <laughs> it, it is. awesome. She, she does is the very best nice. work. Okay. Oh! Okay. So this is our local amusement park here called Lagoon. And it has changed quite a bit during this time. Can I have you flip that oh, upside down? Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I ambushed I you. We're not on, on the there. roller coaster right <laughs> now. <laughs> this but, is a yeah. roller coaster, the big white roller yeah. coaster. And Oops. so she went back to this photograph from the time when she was growing up and made this block from that time period, even though it looks completely different now. Today, yeah. But that's her memory. The nice thing about technology is that we can go back and see those old pictures because mm -hmm. someone has them and they've posted them. Yes. So it's really nice to have that. Yes. So she's got a whole box of these and oh, it's just unbelievable. So, so that's how you can have memory quilts by how you piece it or oh, that's, applique that or any of that amazing. kind of stuff. That's, that's yeah. worth priceless, yeah. priceless. Okay, I have a quilt that I quilted for a young man, uh, a Boy Scout, when he got his eagle. And so what happened is I didn't piece it. I did not piece this. The grandma pieced it, and I, she asked me to quilt it. So let's just stretch it out a little bit here. The first thing she did is she pulled a nice um, panel for depicting it's an eagle. She put his name on it. And then what I did is I went through and digitized the slogan, the motto, the, the scout law. The scout law. There you go. Right. I see. I got a boy. I got Eagle Scout three times because I have three sons. Right. I only have one. Way, <laughs> isn't that the way that works? I am an Eagle Scout. Yeah. So I got this. right. And then his patches. She put on the date that he got this. And then my job was to quilt it and make sure I didn't stitch over these patches. Mm. So part of of adding, doing memory quilts is all that embellishing that, that quilters or piecers yeah. want to put on and then we've got to figure out how to make it work. Yes. So it worked. I just used straight lines and stitched around so that I stitched those patches down. So the patches were on there before you they did They were the on there and all okay. of this was on there. I just had to go around or or tie off and okay. I just you just don't want to stitch over those things but I had so much fun digitizing those mottos those all of those phrases and putting them on there it was really it's like oh I wish my boys all had a quilt like this <laughs> I guess I could but yeah. so my favorite part about this is the fact that it has the name up here right and the date so anybody that sees this quilt 100 years from now they're gonna know what it is Right. So that, that memory will be able and to continue And we're going to talk today. about memories mm -hmm. there in a minute. Yep. So let's take this away. And 
We're going to bring Johnny back here on screen here too because this is a very mm. dear, cherished quilt from one of our dear friends, uh, co-workers at Handy Quilter, Karen Dale, that passed away in the last year. And um, she made this, but her family gave it to us because, and I think it's all because of this right here. Because of our bags. Yep, the famous Handy Quilter <laughs> bags. At the beach. Yep. But the memories, and this has a lot of embellishing. It has your little seashells and the fish with beads. That's really cute to do yeah. that. And the little flip-flops and just different things on this. But these are memories. Oh, look Check at out the sequins on the mermaid. mermaid and jellyfish. Are right. This is where she's been throughout her life. Now, there is a memory. What does that say? It says, pieced and quilted by Karen Deal given to Handy Quilter by her sons, 2018. We think of Karen in her favorite place at the beach with her family. We miss you. Yeah, the beach. Her favorite place. That's right, yep. and what a memory. So this is hanging at Handy Quilter because of that wonderful memory, that beautiful lady that we all know. Yes. Okay, what else have we got that, that creates memories? Well, I wanna, point out one thing on this that leads into our next se okay. section where the quilting is the memory. So I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but we've got little sand castles that she stitched in the sand there. That she probably helped build with her grandchildren. Uh -huh. So I'm sure that right those there. were memories that she had. And just from how she quilted this, it's adding to the memories. Okay, it's like the scout quilt yes. that has mm -hmm. those mottos and those that's a memory that they know and they'll always remember. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Christina, we have a lot more here of, you know, ideas. So, so I think quilts, memory quilts, but you've gone to another level here. They don't have to be just memory quilts, do they? No, they don't. So this one's just like a little wall hanging piece of artwork and the quilting on this one is the memory. So I didn't do any piecing or anything, but I digitized the place where I was married, and so this is the memory of that. Okay. So this one. So that's actually not embroidered, that's quilted. That is quilted with so sassy thread. It's a 12 weight thread, and I think it shows up nicely. It does, mm -hmm. it does. So this, I, after I quilted that out, I took just, you know, a stretched canvas frame. Right. And I just stretched it over and used a nail gun and so you didn't have to bind it. Gun. You didn't have to frame it. Nope. And you can even turn that around if you want. And I just covered up the back with the paper and wrote my label on it. So that's going to be a gift for a friend. Okay. So all, another type of a label, just mm -hmm. writing. It doesn't yep. have to be on fabric. Correct. Okay. We're just going to put that aside here. Okay. I'll hand that off. To you. All right. So this is another quilt that the quilting is part of the, the actual memory. So this was a group from the Inspiration Squad and I asked everybody to submit words that they thought of when they thought of Handy Quilter and the time that we spent here. And these are all of the words that they came up with. So to them, Handy Quilter is family, it's amazing, kind, friends. And so we incorporated that into the quilt as well as the date and the Quilt Your Desire Inspiration Squad. So what is all this here? So those are all notes that each, um, person, each person wrote a note and then we printed it out on fabric. Okay, so with just an inkjet printer? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, yep. And, and then ironed it on. Or how did you do that? How did you attach that fabric to get it to go through an inkjet printer? So there are a couple different ways that you can do that. Um, one is the spray method. So use your basting spray like a 505 and take a sheet of paper, spray the paper, or you can spray the fabric, and put the fabric and the paper together, and then just trim the fabric to the same size as the paper. Okay. And you can put it through your printer. Sometimes if it's not wow. on there really well, it'll catch. Um, so you do have to be careful of that. Another way is freezer paper. So pretty much the same thing. You take a piece of freezer paper, and you iron it on, so the, the shiny side towards the fabric. Right iron it on so that they kind of adhere mm -hmm. and trim it down to the size of a piece of paper 
and then put it through the inkjet okay. printer. Okay, because I know some people say if you have a problem at the edge going in that you can put a little piece of tape across there and that'll hold those together? I haven't tried that, but I'll have to next time. Yeah, or there's always the, the stuff that you can purchase like we showed with the photo paper. Right, like yep. printed treasures or mm -hmm. different types that, and, and then it actually doesn't leave a plastic film, it actually prints it right into the grain of the fabric. Yeah, so this is directly onto the fabric. Okay, yep. I like that. Then what do you do afterwards? Do you have to heat set that? I do the five minute vinegar bath. So and it I doesn't just, take that out at all, it just sets it in. Yep, so I just set it in the vinegar for about five minutes, take it out, rinse it in cold water, and then I pieced it in with the sashings. Okay, yep. okay. Awesome. good tips. I like this, so d who quilted this? Me. <laughs> We're gonna bring it back here. <laughs> so how did you do your letters? Did you just freehand them or did you write them on there? Those were freehand. Um, I chose to do the variegated thread because when we were here for the Inspiration Squad, that was one of the things that we learned how to use was the variegated thread and different types of threads and, okay. and the TNT. And so I wanted to incorporate that into the quilt. Okay, this is awesome. This part down here is digitized though. Okay, but this Good. is all Christina Whitney. Yep, just going crazy. All right, she is crazy. I was on a time crunch. She is a crazy lady. Okay, what okay. else have we got here? So now we'll move into some different things besides just the basic quilt. Well, so pillows. This is one of my grandmother's doilies, and I just put it on some fabric, played around with it, and now I've got a pillow that has the memory of my grandmother. Okay. So. Do you have any signature or anything saying? Not on that one. Some of my others I do. Okay, I just wondered. <laughs> this one is awesome. This was made by one of our educators, and they took the quilt that great grandma had made and made it into a teddy bear. So the quilt itself was getting frayed, and you see it. There's a lot of right. uh, discoloration in there. So it pr still preserves the memory of that quilt, but just in a different way. But isn't that so that cute? That is adorable. When I saw this at her house, I was like dying because it's just so cute. So such a good job with that. I got a few of those old quilts like that. Yeah. <laughs> Should make those. Yeah. And, and then, then this is another old quilt. Yeah, another old quilt. The same thing. It was kind of falling apart. So they cut it into the size of a frame and then framed it. So it preserves it. It preserves the memory. So if you have one of grandma's quilts, you could cut it into, and there's three or four children, cut them each a square, frame it, and they've got that memory. Yeah. And then label on the back so that yep. it, labeling is so important. Oh my it gosh. Is. Are we gonna talk about labeling now? Let's talk about labeling. Okay, oh yes, man, we, we led right label. into that. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right. So, labeling. I made my children last year for Christmas five patriotic quilts, one each, and uh, in memory of their father. And he served in Vietnam, so he had that military experience. And I wanted to put a label on it, but I wanted his picture on it. So I went to Spoonflower, and I sent and they were oh. kind of all. What is Spoonflower for those that don't know? Spoonflower is a company that prints anything you want to send to them. They will print it on fabric. Okay. You, it can be a fat quarter or it can be yardage. a you can yardage. Buy, yeah, you can buy yardage. Yeah, you can buy yardage. So I took uh, my label, made it up. You do it all on the computer, and they took his picture and send it to them and they sent me these cute little labels that, that now I attach to every one of these quilts. And it was it was a real tender moment for my kids to get that quilt in memory of their father. Yes. And that's why it's a memory that will be forever because they know that label is on the back. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else have we got here? Because I see more printing, but piecing too. Yes, so this one, um, this is a round robin quilt and mm -hmm. so it was put together by six different people throughout the U.S. and Canada and so when we started this group we were each given a blank label and we had to write our name on the label as the quilt owner and then as the quilt traveled the label traveled with it and each person signed their name 
as they did their round on the round robin, and then oh we put the date gosh. on it. That is really thinking ahead to have the label beforehand. Yes. Because normally it isn't. <laughs> and so with that, come, I'd like to open it up and show. Okay. Because I think it's just a beautiful quilt. This is, just hold this up here. And so the label really depicts what's in the quilt. And so yep. each person did, and it's a round robin, mm -hmm. so you did a whole round. Yep. And what did you do? All I did was this center square on point with the sunflowers. And, and that's a lot of thread play. And then I quilted it once it came back to me. Okay. Yeah. That is beautiful. A lot of quilting. Yes. A Lots lot of, of piecing. A lot of piecing. Okay, let's bring in some more labels and some different ideas, and then we've got one more quilt to show and a reason why to do. Okay? You got another one? Yes. So this is one we showed earlier. Oh, yeah. That signature quilt. And Mary Beth Crapel, one of our um, national educators, quilted it. And then here is the label. Let's turn it around so that okay. you can actually see. Well, I don't know if there is a right. It just goes around. Goes all the way around. Yeah. It's from the Southern Wake Quilters Guild. With all our love and deepest appreciation for the opportunity to touch countless lives with your most generous gift, pieced by quilt members or by guild members and quilted by Mary Beth Crapel. and it's here's your blocks, and I mean it tells a story. It tells something yeah. here, and it has a date. It's so yeah. important to put a date on. Yes, and names, and there it is with all those other names. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now. this one you'll notice it's handwritten. So right. there's so many ways you can do labels. It can be handwritten, it can be printed. You saw the one I did on paper. Anything that's going to give us that information and tell the story. Machine the embroidery. Embroidery, yes, so or many different pieced. ways. I know there's people that actually do paper piecing, letters that small. Oh my goodness. I know. <laughs> I don't have time for that. But you know what? <laughs> the thing that's really cool is we can put a label in a corner. Mm -hmm and write it on and it's there and when you piece or when you put your binding on it's done. Mm -hmm. You can do a label this big and you can put it orient it any way you want which you can see here but I think the quilt that we've got back here that Johnny's going to bring in is probably the most amazing quilt that I've ever seen as far as labeling. Yes. It's, okay. it's its whole quilt on its own. So this is the one from um, the anti-quilt people. And so they labeled it with all of their names and some thoughts. They each put a thought into it. And this is a, looks like a Sharpie marker that was used for writing. This is more of a, but they're all permanent. All the, this was a print. This was writing with another pen. Yep. And so this is machine embroidered over the, on the back. And so the quilting on the front is going to run over this. Mm -hmm. It's going to. Yeah. But it's okay. It does not destroy the label on the back. So this pretty much is, I can that keep is going. the label. I mean, so it's it a is. big kite, and all the tails on the kite are their little notes. Right. So don't let the front of the quilt take all of the credit here. Mm -hmm. You put that label on it, and it's a memory forever. And we don't have to remember it because it's all right here. That's the best okay. part. <laughs> right. Get the label on and then your brain can shut down. <laughs> That's right. Okay, now we have one last thing here that we want to show. Christina, tell us about this quilt. Okay, this is a quilt that one of my friends made. Her name is Kay Morgan, and it is a memory quilt from a family trip to the Cayman Islands. And she wanted to have the whole family involved, but she's the only quilter. Okay. So what she did is she cut out all the pieces for these blocks, and these are the maritime letters and she had each one of the kids do one letter for their name. So this is her husband's name, her name, and then each of their kids, and they each had to do at least one letter, and it's all hand-stitched. The, the piecing is all hand-stitched? All the piecing is hand-stitched. Oh. So she does amazing handwork. But um, when she brought this to me, I was trying to figure out how do I want to quilt this? so that I keep that memory and have the memory be the focus, not my quilting. Right. So I went ahead and I just stitched in the ditch around all of the blocks 
and then inside the individual blocks. And then I, I wanted them to pop. Right. So I used two layers of batting. Okay, so you've so got, got a... So I've got 80-20 and then I've got a wool batting. So you can see here how they pop a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of small stippling in here to really smash that part down right. to let the letters That really does pop. Really That's pop nice. Up. So these, it's still in progress. Right. Um, but I want to be able to show those different steps and how the quilting can change the look of it. And so on the, you brought this in partially quilted, mm -hmm. and but you went through and you've done all that stippling or most of it. And so you had to stabilize this quilt so that yeah. you could transport it. Transport it. So yes. talk about how you transported. Okay. I mean, how you <laughs> stabilized. <laughs> I transported by in putting it in the car. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no. Um, so I had these open <laughs> areas that didn't have any quilting on them. And so I just basted along on all of those empty areas. And then um, I did have basting along here. I just took it out so that we could see it a little bit better. Okay. But all of the areas that did not already have quilting that weren't already stabilized, I basted through it to keep the layers together. Okay, uh, tell me why you, how you're quilting this now, because you've got part, part of it quilted. So up here I've got these wavy lines. It's kind of a nautical theme. Okay. Um, it's a gift for my friend's husband. It's going to hang in his office. So I wanted something kind is of masculine. Is this for Christmas? It is. Good, because this will not show till <laughs> after Christmas. I, I made sure to let her know because it is a surprise. <laughs> okay. Um, so with it being the kind of a nautical theme and their trip to the Cayman Islands and all that stuff, um, we actually talked about it here in the studio, and Vicki came up with this great idea to just do the waves. So um, we digitized waves, and I've got a couple rows done there, and then I will go ahead and use So the you digitized it and you used it with the Pro Stitcher, but mm -hmm. we do have the wave rulers that you could yes. have totally, mm -hmm. because you don't have to go all the way across, which you could, mm -hmm. but that works great. Yeah, so that was nice, and then I did use rulers. Um, for, Stitch in the ditch. Yeah, I actually used channel locks to go around the outside of the block to so you keep really it squared. squared. Oh. Yes, and then I went back with rulers so that I could, you know, adjust it a little bit quicker and go around the blocks you know, right. individually. So this this quilt's a combination of everything: some free motion rulers, pro stitcher. That's all of great. It. So, so um, when we talk about memories and labeling and all of this. Do you ever have the quilter, when you quilt for people, do they ever put that it was quilted by Christina Whitney? I think some of them do. It depends on the quilter. Because that would be really nice, yeah. too. Some of the quilters that put things in shows will always put mm -hmm. that on their label. Right, yeah. right, so. right. So all of those memories we need to write down and keep track of them so we have a history, because mm -hmm. history is really important. Yes. Johnny, do you have anything you'd like to... Always label your quilts. Always label your quilts. <laughs> My quilts aren't labeled. That's why I'm saying that. <laughs> so, Johnny... I think while I have them, I'm going to add a label before I give them back. That's our New Year's guess. resolution is yeah. to label our quilts. Yeah I, went to a, yeah, I went to a quilt guild, and they chided me for not having <laughs> quilt labels on my quilts. So label your quilts. Label your quilts because that's part of the memory. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to put a whole letter on there and a paragraph because I've seen that. Oh yeah. yeah. You know for the labeling. So we can't stress that enough that that's really important to do. But, but don't be afraid to take all those memories that are in boxes. You know memorabilia that you can put on a quilt. Or if you can't quilt over the top of it, quilt a piece of fabric and then attach it and put it like you did in a frame mm -hmm. or make an animal out of it. Yeah. So there are so many ways to make memories and keep memories. Preserve them. Preserve, yep. Preserve memories. memories. So yes. Important. So we are so happy that you've joined us today. Join us next month for another HQ Live and don't forget to follow us on YouTube and check out all of our videos there. Have a good day.